Hi everyone, I welcome you back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be explaining the effects of incorporation of a company. I'll advise you see my previous videos on formation of a company, so as to have a better understanding of this video. Upon the issuance of the Certificate of Incorporation after registration, and as from the date mentioned therein, the subscribers of the memorandum, together with such other persons as may become members of the company shall be a body corporate. In all, the grand effect of incorporation is the status of corporate personality. So what is corporate personality? Corporate personality confers a separate and distinct entity on a company to be different from its shareholders or members as an artificial person capable of exercising all powers, duties and rights in its own name. In the case of Salomon versus Salomon, Salomon incorporated his leather boots making business as a company with his family as members of the company. The company bought his business at a high price which was paid to him by way of shares and debentures. Not long after the incorporation, the company was liquidated and Salomon's right of recovery stood aporia to the claims of unsecured creditors of the company, who would have nothing to recover from the liquidation proceeds. In this case, it was contended that the formation of the company by Salomon was a fraud and the company was in reality still Salomon. By that reason, his floating charge should not be honored, and he should be made liable for the debts of the company. At the court of first instance, it was held that Salomon was liable as the real proprietor, but the House of Lords reversed the decision and held that the company was duly incorporated. And as such, the company, in law, is an independent person from Salomon with its rights and liabilities appropriate to itself and not Salomon, as the two cannot be regarded as same person. Flowing from the decision in Salomon's case, the principle of separate legal entity was consistently applied in subsequent cases of Macora v. Northern Assurance Company and Lee v. Lee Air Farming Limited. In the former case, the owner of a timber estate sold the whole timber to a company in consideration of fully paid up shares and thus became the major shareholder and subsequently insured the timbers against fire in his own name. He sued the insurance company because he could not recover the losses after a greater part of the timber was destroyed by fire. It was held that he had no insurable interest in the company's assets notwithstanding that he is the largest creditor of the company. In essence, the company exercises its right and responsibility in its own name and in this case, it would have been a different story if the timbers were insured in the company's name. In the latter case, Lee was the sole director of the company which he founded and owned all the shares and was at the same time an employee of the company. He died in a flying accident while on the company's business and his widow was held entitled to recover compensation from the company. In this case, the rule of separate entity was upheld, as the company and Lee were separate persons in law and in one capacity acting as the director, he can make contract with himself in another capacity. For further reading, you can see also the case of Dunlop Nigerian Industries Limited versus Forward Nigeria Enterprises. It is clear from these cases that a company is a distinct legal person from its shareholders, members or creditors. We have seen the separate entity rule of corporate personality, now let's look at the other features of corporate personality. The popular feature of the principle of corporate personality is limited liability. Limited liability implies that the shareholders or members are not personally liable for the debts of the company, but they will be personally liable where the company is registered as an unlimited liability company. In the case of a company limited by guarantee, each member contributes only to the extent of their guarantee which would be when the company is winding up. In essence, creditors of a company cannot hold the members or shareholders personally responsible for the company's debts and liabilities. Another feature of corporate personality is the ability of the company as a juristic person to be sued and sue in its own name. Whenever the company is in breach of its legal duties, 
it can only be sued in its registered name and not the members of the company. And in the same vein, the director of a company cannot validly institute an action in his own capacity to enforce the company's legal rights. The correct party is the company itself using its registered name. In Federal University of Technology Mina and Others versus Adizo Coley, it was contended among other things that the university was not a juristic person and cannot sue or be sued in law. The court brought back to fore the definition of a juristic person as explained in the case of Akas versus manager to mean either a natural person in the sense of a human being of the requisite capacity or an entity created by the law which includes an incorporated body, and special artificial being created by legislation and vested with the capacity to sue and be sued. A company as a legal person has the right to own property which must be acquired under its registered name. The property belongs to the company and not to the individual members or shareholders. It is worthy of note that the company may lease, mortgage or dispose property without affecting the member's interest in the company. These transactions must also be under the company's registered name. Unlike sole proprietorship and partnership business, the death, insanity, incapacity or bankruptcy of a member or shareholder does not affect the lifespan of a company. In essence, a change in the membership or management of a company does not bring an end to the existence of a company. Besides the aforementioned features of corporate personality, a company's shares may be transferred from one shareholder to another without affecting the existence of the company. A company also has the ability to borrow large sums of money from banks in its own name without affecting the personal assets of individual shareholders or members. So in summary, the principle of corporate personality as enunciated in the case of Salomon versus Salomon is simply that the company is a separate and distinct person from its members. It can sue and be sued in its name. It has limited liability in the sense that the liability of the members is limited to the shares they own in the company. Its debts are not the debts of the members. It can acquire and dispose property in its name. A shareholder can transfer his shares without affecting the status of the company and the company can borrow funds in its name. Hence, the company has all the powers of a natural person and has perpetual succession as the death of the owner or a member or shareholder does not bring an end to the company's existence. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned from it. Do not forget to like this video and share with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe if you're yet to subscribe to my channel. And please do not forget to turn on your notification bell so you can be notified of my next video. Thank you. Bye.